Okay, um, so if you look at the board, I'm just going to keep this up the whole time so that you all can see this, so it'll be easier. Um, our end goal kind of looks like this, so we're going to try out some different like ways to watercolor here, and then you're going to test out some of the colors on your palette so that you can kind of get used to using them right here. Um, so you basically just need your sketchbook open like this. Um, and you might, do you all have a pencil? Does everyone have a pencil? Cool. Okay, so the first thing you can do, um, oh, we need a tape. Yeah. All right, everyone should have tape. We are going to section off the left side of our paper. If you can see like how I did it here, um, how I have all these little squares. You're basically going to do, so take one piece of tape, you can find it in. All right, the first piece of tape is just going to go right down the middle of the sheet, just like this. going to take another piece of tape. You can find the end of it, unlike me, if I can't. All right, and then that piece of tape, whoa. <laughs> That piece of tape, um, you're going to put kind of towards the top like this. We're not trying, you don't have to, actually put it up here. Put it up top. It's okay if these aren't like perfect. We're just like testing out different methods, right? So it doesn't have to be super, super precise. Yeah. Yes. You might have to share with someone because I don't have enough rolls for everyone to have their own. Okay, cool. Um, those are kind of running low, so I'm going to give you one. Just in case you run out. Okay, so then we're going to put another piece of tape right here. And then another one about right there. <laughs> yeah, and then one more at the bottom. You see, I'm like trying to make these squares and we want to have six squares total inside of our tape. And then after you get one, two, three, four pieces, go ahead and put one on the sides. All right, so you see now I have one, two, three, four, five, six boxes inside of my tape. Thank you. 
in about like 30 more seconds. 30 seconds we'll be ready with tape. So the next thing we want to do is just like take a pencil and we're going to draw some circles and a big rectangle on the right side on this sheet. Um, so I'm going to rip my example out of here so you can see it. So you can see on my example I have this like rectangle in the middle. So just go ahead and draw that. Yeah, so this is on the right side of the sketchbook. The tape was on the left. This is on the right. And then next to the rectangle on the left, you're going to want to draw eight little circles. And they do not have to be perfect. Yep.
Okay, um, and on the right side, I'll give you guys time to catch up with this, don't worry, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw it so I can walk around. Um, but on the right side, you can draw three more circles, but if you wanna do other shapes, you can. I'm gonna do some like squiggly circles. Kind of looks like paint spots. Okay, so when you get done with that, you want both of your sheets to look something like this. watercolors they're a little bit have you ever used like acrylics or like any kind of craft paint and well if you have like you put it on there and you have like it's just straight up paint right um, with watercolor you may be familiar with this but watercolor you want to water it down um, when you watercolor to create a painting or something you want to start out with a really like kind of light layer and then build up color and you do that by layering so you can like imagine a bunch of transparent sheets on top of each other that are like a really light color red or something and as you stack them they would get darker and darker red right because they're transparent you can kind of imagine watercolor to be like that so um i'm just going to use the brush that came with my palette because i really like it um but the first thing we're going to do is just like look at the colors and you kind of get like the hang of how much watercolor to use with your watercolor palette. Um, but you want to get your brush pretty wet. Mine's a little bit damp already because I was working on this a little bit ago. But um, get quite a bit of water on there and then just like put it into the paint and start brushing it around so you can get the palette wet. Because with these watercolors, we're starting out from like a dry pigment, right? So we need to saturate it with some water. Okay, and once you've got, we're going to start with red. Once you got some red paint, just go ahead and paint it in your circle. You see how mine's going on kind of light? Because I don't have like a whole ton of paint on my paintbrush. I've watered it down a little bit. Cool. This is just to kind of get used to like what our colors look like. After this dries, we're going to go back and put a layer on it so you'll be able to see um like what it looks like when you layer the pigment so as we go down um i'm just gonna do that for each color so i've got eight colors total if you're using a double palette i think it's the left side that looks identical to our palette so we got some orange Okay, so after you do that, it should look something like that. Like you've got a bit of each color. 
Two minutes, we'll do step the next step.
Okay, are we ready? Yeah. 30 more seconds, will that do it? Be good? They don't have to be perfect. You can go outside the line. Okay, I've All right, okay, I'm going to move on to the next step, everyone. So we're going to let this dry. We did that first. We can let it dry and do some stuff to it later. Um, but now we're going to start messing around with this sheet, okay? Um, we're going to start at the bottom left corner right here. Um, we're going to do the first method is going to be dry brush. So you'll want one of your flat, well, you could use any brush for this, but I'm going to use my flat brush. Um, get it a little bit wet, like don't, not a lot, and you might want to dry it out a little bit with your paper towel I gave you, because we're going to use dry brush method. So the brush needs to be like saturated enough to hold some of the color, but still dry enough to not have a whole bunch of water in it. Um, and then you can pick any color you want and put it on your brush. Then you might want to like, you see how I kind of like don't want it super pigmented so I like rub it off a little bit. Does that make sense? Cool. So you can, I don't know if you can tell but my brush has some green on it but it doesn't have a lot of water. My brush is pretty dry. You can dry it off on your napkin too. So after you're ready to paint, you're just going to draw whatever in that first one. I'm going to do some squiggly lines. And you see how my brush is like really dry so it doesn't let a lot of the watercolor off of it. And it, there's like texture on it, right? Because you can still see the texture of my brush. What color are you using? Any color. I just chose green. But yeah, for, for this side, you can choose any color. You can do one color for the whole thing or you can do a different color for each square. That doesn't matter. Okay, so this one is dry brush. I'm going to write them down, but you don't have to yet. Okay, so the next square, we're just going to take and get our brush wet 
And unlike this one, we want the water in the brush, right? So we're not gonna dry it out on the napkin. Just get some water on your brush, pick a color, and then just we're just gonna paint that one like normal. And this is called the wet on dry method because we are using a wet paintbrush on dry paper. So this is what you're probably like used to doing, right? We just did that on all the circles. Okay, you ready for the next one? This next one's kind of cool. I like this one. So this time we did wet on dry. So we started with dry paper, right? For the next one, we're going to start with our paper being wet. So um, get all the pigment out of your brush, like put it, swish it around in the container, the water container. And then get some water on your brush and don't get the don't get the paint yet. We're just we just want water on the brush and we're just going to put water on the page. All right. This one right here. So I just painted painted water on the page. And then once you've got that the water ahead and get it any color just like we did before so wet your brush and then get a color and then you can just paint in there yeah so get the paper wet but you're also getting the brush wet with the water and the color and you see how it kind of looks kind of tie dye when you drop the color on there If you want to mess around with this one, um, you can also take another color, and I'm going to take yellow, and you can just like drop it in, and it'll make kind of a fun tie-dye effect. going to do dry on wet. So this time we're going to get the water, the paper wet again with just water with no color in it. I'm going to put this one right here next to the one I just did. Yeah, so get the paper wet again just like we did last time. Um, I did that with my flat brush and I'm going to switch over to my round brush. And this time you want to get, after you get the paper wet, 
You want to get the round brush dry, like make sure that there's no water on the round brush. Except a little bit. I'm, I'm taking all the water out of my round brush because the color I'm going to choose is already kind of saturated with water. Um, but you might want a little tiny bit of water on here if the color you're going to choose is dry on the palette. So this is just like when we did the dry brush. We're just doing dry brush again. So I'm going to take a little bit of, I'm going to do green. So after you've got your paper saturated with water and you've got wa uh, pigment on your brush, and we're doing the dry brush method again, so you shouldn't have a lot of water on your brush, um, you're just going to paint on to that already wet piece of paper. And this one um, kind of looks like spray paint sometimes. Do you know like in like Microsoft Paint, the little paint tool where it kind of spreads out? Or the, the spray paint tool? That's kind of what this one looks like. Is everyone ready for the next technique? Yeah. Cool. So this one you definitely want a flat brush. If you have one of the like giant flat brushes, it uh, might work, but you might want to use the flat brush in your kit that you got. Um, yeah, the giant ones are like, I don't know if I have one up here. They're just like half the size of the square, but you can try to use it. It might work, but we'll, uh, the, if you have a giant one, we'll use it over here for sure. Anyways. Um, so you want a flat brush about this size or smaller, and then we're just going to get water on there and pick a color. This is kind of like um, the wet on dry that we did, so we're getting our brush wet and we're getting the color, and then um, the paper is going to be dry. Okay, and this one has a lot to do with like how you move the brush across the paper, so you might want to watch me real quick before you do it. But this one is gradient, so this is how you kind of make a gradient with watercolor. So I want to make sure that my brush is like pretty saturated, and then you're just going to go like this, like right and left and right and left. And kind of as you go down, um, can you see, it's like... If you have a larger area, it's like really evident, but since my, uh, the color up here is kind of off and everything, you can't really tell. But, you know, it gets a little bit darker and then it goes lighter as it goes down. Yeah. So it's kind of like the sky, like it starts to light. Um, so you're just going to go like this with your brush to kind of create that effect. Mm -hmm. Okay, the last 
Technique. Um, this one's kind of fun. So for the last one, we're just going to get the paper wet again. So, and then I'm going to add some color to it. Yeah, just add some color and then for this one you're going to use that little napkin I gave you and just like create texture um, I might you might want to like ball it up so that it has like an interesting kind of texture to it and then just like stamp it on your page so you can see how that kind of creates like a texture in your artwork um, with the by, by like removing some of the watercolor from so it's not so smooth, right? <laughs> Yeah, like, what do we do for it? Oh, did you like the wet on it? So, like, throw it wet, and then have it to it? And then stamp some of it? Do you have a minute? All right, so is everyone good on texture? We need another minute. Good to go. Cool. Okay, let's um, go over to this page. This page, we're just going to have some fun with color, really, because um, now you've got kind of the main techniques. Of, I mean, obviously, they're like endless things you can do with watercolor, but those are some of the main techniques that you might want to use if you create a project with watercolor. Um, but on this side, I just kind of wanted you all to get used to like what colors look like when they're layered and also um, to see like what our color palette looks like because it looks a little bit different from the palette when it's like so saturated compared to when you actually paint it because it's lighter. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just go back over these. They should be dry. Mine are dry. Are all of yours dry or should we wait a little bit more? They're all dry? Okay, cool. So I'm going to just go over those one more time halfway through the circle. So you can kind of see the difference of color like when you layer it. Yeah, so it should get darker. And like if we do like a watercolor kind of project, you should be able to like book, look back at these and see some of the different color options and maybe what you can do to build up that color. Okay, cool. So when you're done, it should, I mean, it doesn't have to look exactly like mine, but you should have like half of that circle kind of lighter and then the other half a little bit darker because you layered some of the colors up.
Okay, so in the on the right side of our page, those like three shapes that you drew, this is just like a way to kind of practice mixing your own color. Um, you can see like the on the right side of my palette, I've already kind of used it to mix my own colors, but you don't always have to stick with just these main colors. And we know that we have our primary colors, um, red, blue and yellow. I swear I know that. Oh my gosh. Red, blue, and yellow. So um, you can take those colors and pretty much mix like most colors of the spectrum, right? Um, however, we do already have like purple and green and, you know, brown and orange. Um, but maybe you want like a different shade of orange. Like maybe you want something a little more muted. Um, I don't know. It's getting to be fall. So I'm going to make an orange color. You can make whatever color you want, but you can use this palette spot like over to the side to mix colors. So you see how I put like a little bit of red over there, and then I'm going to take a little bit of yellow to make orange. And then, um, let's see, maybe I'll take some brown to kind of like make it not so vibrant. So yeah, just mix three colors that you choose. You can do more if you want. And then paint them into those shapes that you made on the side. Also, if you like run out of pigment when you're watercoloring, you don't always have to go back to the palette and get more color. Sometimes you can just get more water and then it'll spread that color around on the page. Thank 
All right, so we got one more really cool thing to do. Um, um, for this one, I'm going to show you how to do it and then wait a second because I have to pass something out. Um, so go ahead and watch me and then I'll come around and pass the stuff out and you can do it. Um, but I'm gonna, we're going to do like the wet on wet method here again and I'm going to go ahead and get this set And you can choose whatever because it's kind of for you to just have fun. You can do like, try to do like a full gradient. Um, red, orange, and then yellow. And then green. No, you can you can just do a couple. I'm just doing all of them because for like no reason. Okay, cool. So I've got kind of like a rainbow thing going. I probably put a little bit too much water on mine because I've got this going on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and like blot some of that out. Too much. Um, sprinkle it on our watercolor and salt color. Um, it, it, so the color. Um, I'm gonna kind of like shake a little bit of salt in your hand. If you don't want to do this, that's fine. You don't have to. Just tell me. Um, but go ahead and start on that middle part, and then I'll bring this around.
Yes. Thank you. 